Hello and welcome to worship here on the first Sunday of Lent, February 21st at St. Stephen's Episcopal Church. A reminder, if you have a UTO box, a United Thank Offering box at home from last year, keep filling it up for the season of Lent. And if you don't have one or would like another one, stop by the church office, we'll have them available for you. Also, uh, this is the last week to sign up for the uh, book study. The information will be in the weekly newsletter that comes out on Friday. And so if you intend to do that, make sure you give me a uh, phone call or send me an email for the book study of Uncommon Gratitude by Joan Chittister and Rowan Williams. Let us prepare our hearts to worship God. Our worship begins on page 355. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Our canticle is number 14, found on page 90. page 90, and we will pray this responsively at the half verse. O Lord and ruler of the hosts of heaven, you made the heavens and the earth All things quake with fear at your presence. But your merciful promise is beyond all measure. O Lord, you are full of compassion. You hold back your hand. In your great goodness, Lord, you have promised forgiveness to sinners. And now, O Lord, I bend the knee of my heart. I have sinned, O Lord, I have sinned. Therefore, I make this prayer to you. Do not let me perish in my sin. For you, O Lord, are the God of those who repent. Unworthy as I am, you will save me. And in accordance with your great mercy, For all the powers of heaven sing your praise. And your glory to the ages of ages. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan. 
Come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weakness of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. passage from Genesis. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, as for me, I'm establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that is with you, the very birds, the domestic animals, every animal on the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I established my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood. And never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you. For all future generations, I've set my bow in the sky clouds and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I'll remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall never again become a flood to destroy the, all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it. Remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 25, found on page 614. We will read responsibly by whole verse. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put, put to shame. shame. Let, Let the, the treacherous, treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember, Remember not the, the sins, sins of my youth and my, and my transgressions. transgressions. Remember me according to your love and, and for, for the sake, sake of your goodness, O Lord. Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord, therefore he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right and, and teaches his way to the lowly. All the paths of the Lord our love and faithfulness to those who keep his covenant and his testimonies.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In those days Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Well, here we are, the first Sunday of Lent. Jesus is driven out beyond the town and beyond the desert and into the wilderness by the leading of the Spirit. And what does one do with that much time stripped of comfort and familiarity? The Gospels record that the angels served him. But I'm going to make a, a little stretch of imagination about Jesus' time there in the wilderness. In those 40 days, that biblical way of saying it's a long time. I'm going to say there was a rainstorm while Jesus was there. And after the rainstorm, there was a rainbow. And from where Jesus sat, he reflected on the Noah story, the covenant made between God and Noah to protect all of creation from ever having a flood once again wipe out the earth and all the living creatures. And God used the rainbow as a sign. It had already existed, but he used it as a sign of this is the covenant between me and you. Now I imagine Jesus living in a cave at this time when he's out in the wilderness, a place of protection. Now if you go to Israel today and you go on a tour and you come to Jericho, there is then a tour that will take you up to that very place where Jesus was. There's a very crusty, cranky old monk, at least there was when I was there, who, who kind of kept watch over this place for tourist edification. Now, my speculation is that Jesus, while he was in the cave, went back after seeing the rainbow and drew one on the wall. And he put a unicorn and some flowers and everything on it. It's, it's right there. But maybe, maybe, he thought about the covenant and the covenants that have always been made between God and God's people. The circumcision covenant that marked Israel as the people of God. The Sabbath covenant that consecrated a day of rest that God had created. And maybe, just maybe, part of what we understand rainbows to be is part of the human imagination across millennial, millenniums and cultures. The Norse saw the rainbow as a bridge between heaven and earth on which the gods traveled. The Navajo saw it as a bridge for the Holy Spirit to come down to people. 
The Japanese culture saw the rainbow as a bridge that the ancestors traveled on. And of course, we know our Irish friends think that the rainbow's end is where the leprechauns bury the pot of gold. And rainbows have been, if you will, co-opted, captured, and used into all kinds of political movements. Back in the 16th century, the rainbow was used by, a rainbow flag was used by the German peasant revolts. It became a sign of peace for the Italians. And in our own time, the LBGTQ plus folks have used it as a sign of inclusion. Jesse Jackson and the Rainbow Bow Push Coalition of the 1980s and, and Archbishop Desmond Tutu and Nelson Mandela used the rainbow as they set out to shape a new South Africa from a apartheid nation to a nation that include all kinds of ethnicities and peoples. He, they called it a rainbow nation. Well, something has been hiding in plain sight for me as a preacher for these past 37 years. Now, I've had books on my shelves for all that years. Some of them have gotten dusty, and I don't know how I overlooked this. But right there in plain sight was the idea of rainbow. The bow was that of an archer's bow. An implement of death and destruction. It gets used, if you will, as a sign of the protection, as a sign of the covenant that God makes with his people. And the sign is not a bow held up where I, upright in the way of shooting somebody but a bow held up in your hand like this with the ends coming and draping down. In the Middle East, when warriors were ready to give up in a battle, they held up that bow in such a manner as a sign of peace to make their surrender. And you know, that is the genius of myth and symbol and tradition. These things which are so familiar, they're not locked with one definition in one place and in one time. Perhaps the rainbow which is so ubiquitous in children's books about Noah should remind us modern grown-ups that we are all together in this world, that we all have a covenant with God, that the peasant revolts who use the rainbow and the LBTQ folks, the folks in South Africa, throughout time, throughout places, all kinds of people, we need one another like all those colors in the rainbow. Now the rabbis tell a story that the rainbow is one half of a circle. That's God's half. He will not destroy the earth. There is another half of the circle that is unseen. And that half is the half that we hold. That we not destroy this earth. This week, as we see the winter storms engulf the Midwest and the South, we are reminded, much like the flood in Noah's days, that we are up against forces that are much bigger than ourselves. And as smart as we think we are, we can't do this by ourselves. We can't just be the red on the rainbow and think that we've done it all. We need all of us, all those colors, to make it through. We need a rainbow of color of people. And you have to, to include every last one of them. Scientists tell us about a rainbow that there are one million, 
gradations of colors in a rainbow. And we need to take care of those gradations of colors that we're not so aware of or we're not so attracted to. That we need to have a covenant with one another and with God for the earth and all its inhabitants. Perhaps that's what the rainbow can teach us today. Did Jesus go out into the wilderness to a cave someplace outside of Jericho? Hide out in that cave and draw rainbows on the wall? Well, I doubt it. But through Jesus, we are reminded that we have a covenant with God. An agreement that this is a holy world a world that he gave his life for, holding up his part of the rainbow, his part of the circle. And we who follow him hold up our part, asking him to be our strength, our wisdom. And by following him, bring the peace that that covenant that God so intends for this world to have. In these 40 days, we fast, we give alms, we pray as signs of holding up the covenant, joining our hearts and minds and souls and strength to God's love for the world. Oh, we may forget in these 40 days that we have our share, but let us pray that we are called back time and time again to hold up that covenant for all the colors, for all the people, for the entire earth. Amen. Let us continue on page 358 with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
for the prayers of the people, please turn to page 388. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and all of the nations in the ways of justice and peace that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Let us pray for Denise, Robin, Samantha, Steve, and Dan. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. On page 360, let us confess our sins against God, our neighbors, and ourselves. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you, thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. And Almighty God, have mercy on you and forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated and if you'll take care of the table.
In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. And since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and in the life to come. Amen. And let us pray together the prayer our Lord has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And for birthdays this week, Melanie LeBlanc on February 17th, Teresa Peterson on February 19th, and Cormac Wickstrom on February 21st. Happy birthday to you all. So, go from here in peace. Remember the poor. Be kind and gracious to one another. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the one God, and Mother of us all, be upon you and remain with you from this day forth and forevermore. Amen.
Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord.